So, what is biogeology? It's a paradigm-shattering revelation, and everything that we know about geology and the layers of strata and the timeline of when things happened, all of that has to be revisited and revamped because it's based on erroneous thinking. This is an open-source investigation. We need people to participate by comparing more results and conclusions because it's always good to question what you've been told, especially now. Thanks to the, all the people sharing on the internet and social media, we can see far too many correlations to just keep dismissing them as coincidences. My theory is that when you find iron ore, and especially when it's attached to limestone, that what we're looking at is the, the, uh, the red blood that uh, is rich in hemoglobin, which contains iron. That's the, as opposed to the venous blood, which is the purple blood, which doesn't have the, the, you know, the same quantity of iron in it. And so you can see, you know, the underside of that, this has a, a very fleshy, very fleshy look to it. Wow. Take a look at this trabecular bone and compare that to this. This is rock that's found on the top of the mountain. This is a real good example of the Swiss cheese trabecular bone. You see multiple channels, and, and here there's both iron ore yep. and the reddish earth that's coming out. Now, some people might think that the earth has been packed in there because of flooding, but I've shown in uh, other videos that there are uh, larger rocks, which we'll look at one in a moment, that uh, chunks of the rocks have broken off, exposing channels inside the rock with the, the reddish earth oozing out. Yeah. So that uh, kind of debunks that, that explanation. But this has been fractured or broken, and, and so has this. But on the other side, you see these, these micro blood vessels. So the, as, as the, the tissue has, has been broken, then the iron ore accumulates. And if you look down in here, you can see all of these smooth, curved passages, and there's channels, and those channels become smaller channels. You can see the remains of the reddish earth that's all the way up here. The iron ore is caked throughout the channels. Okay, but if we look over here, we've got a block that's about three foot. And then you have this massive hole here filled with, guess what, reddish earth, right? Isn't that that's strange? A... And you'd expect that that red earth would be at the bottom if it was from you know, rainfall, then it would go to the lowest point, but the point that it's packed up to the top suggests that it was in there before right. the weathering. And again, here you see these, these little lines that are like micro blood vessels, which you would find in, in bone. In cortical bone, you're going to have a thick, compact bone with occasional channels going through it, and that's what you're seeing. And then here, if you look down, you can see there's a big channel here. And then the thing about blood vessels is they're like, they're fractal in nature, like trees, right? You have a trunk, and then you have a smaller branch, and yeah. a smaller branch, and a smaller branch. And so that's what you're seeing, is this Big one opens going up, into and then it goes into smaller and smaller ones. So explain that to me through erosion. Yeah. <laughs> and how come these ones are going down, and this one's going horizontal? You'd expect them to follow a bit more of a suit, a bit more of a pattern. So yeah. you'll find stones that are kind of a combination of the two, I call them transition stones. So you've got the trabecular bone that's becoming cortical bone, yep. like that in between. So you'll find one side has thick, non-vascular stone, and then the other side has uh, has the, the Swiss cheese. Here we can see the blood flowing through bones in all directions, thoroughly down the center, and blatantly much less in the dense outer layer. These uh, stones, I believe, are all chunks of titans. Um, and if you get up on them and you look down, you see that there's loads of different kinds of histology, which is the, the, the tissues. And uh, you, can, you can see some that have the iron ore that's caked onto the side with little openings like that one over there. So what is it you just noticed? I noticed that this rock looks like a lot. Yeah. Like the structure out of a lung. You see spongy. Air. That's the, like the blood vessels that go into the lung. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
I guess it's just another coincidence, no? Who knows? Who knows? There's mountains of evidence to support alternative theories that conflict with many of the explanations that we believe to be true, which causes us to ignore, suppress, and sometimes even censor the new information, instead of just verifying it by applying the scientific method. The primary tool of a forensic scientist is the microscope, and when you're dealing with something the size of a mountain, you are the microscope. We're saving the biggest and best evidence for last. But hopefully, we've already convinced you to go and take another look at your landscape. In the next episode, we will share our external and internal observations of the Monaco Mountain in Javier, Spain, which happens to have 50 correlations with the anatomy of an elephant. Now, that's a lot of coincidences. Any final thoughts, Mike? Another thing about karst, or more specifically limestone, is that the official explanation in mainstream geology about how limestone forms is that it's actually comprised of mollusks, coral, shellfish, and skeleton, and that that has all been compressed under the sea floor for hundreds of millions of years, creating limestone, and then that limestone is pushed upward through tectonic activity, and then eroded by water and, and wind and rain yeah and uh so it's very interesting that even according to mainstream geology this is officially made of bone ah.